Hi, this is Dan Smith of DPS Legal Counsel. Today I'm going to be talking about how to choose a great flagship trademark for your business or perhaps your professional practice if you're a physician or other professional starting uh, a practice. How do you choose the main, what I call, flagship trademark for your business? Um, there are essentially five types or categories of distinctiveness of trademarks and they're on a spectrum from least distinctive to most distinctive. And we'll talk in a minute about why, why that makes a difference. But the, the five categories or types of distinctiveness uh, for uh, a, a trademark start with the least distinctive which is generic. A generic trademark would be something along the lines of um, restaurant or uh, um, diner or donut shop or some name or description of your business that is totally generic. Put your business into a generic category of what it does, it, what kind of goods it sells, what kind of services it provides. Law firm, doctor's office, that type of thing. That is generic and it's the least distinctive and as a result it, we'll, we'll talk in a minute about uh, what, what the, what the uh, reasons for having a more distinctive trademark are from a less distinct, uh, uh, distinctive trademark. But it's just to say a generic trademark is basically impossible to get a registered trademark through the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. They will not trademark or give you trademark protection, give you a registered trademark for a generic trademark. As, as you can imagine, it would be impossible for you to get a registered trademark for donut shop or restaurant. It just would not happen. It's generic. The second level of distinctiveness, one up the line in the distinctiveness spectrum, is descriptive. A descriptive trademark um, is essentially what it what it says. It's a trademark that gives some description of a characteristic of the business. Um, so, for example, uh, best restaurant or uh, cozy donut shop, or uh, could be it could be a, um, uh, a, descript a descriptive term that talks about the geography or, or the location of the, the business, like uh, North Nashville Restaurant or South Jackson Donut Shop, something like that. Now, a descriptive trademark is trademarkable through the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office if the description or the descriptive nature of the trademark has what is called uh, has acquired secondary meaning to, to that descriptive term, uh, which basically means that by use, um, customers, potential customers uh, associate that descriptive name, that descriptive trademark, with the source of uh, the goods or services being provided. In other words, that name has acquired a secondary meaning in the marketplace so that people associate that name with your business. And so if you're operating for a while in a particular place and you've been calling your business um, Philadelphia um, Restaurant of or, or a name of a street in your restaurant and it's been operating that way and people recognize that that refers to your business. Uh, you may be able to get a trademark for that business with a descriptive trademark. But again, it's at the very low end of, of protection that might be offered um, through the trademark registration process and it's even questionable if uh, if you could get it trademarked, it would require that you could show that you had uh, that the trademark had acquired some type of secondary meaning in addition to ju just being merely descriptive. 
the third level, and this is where you start getting into good trademarks, good trademarkable trademarks, is suggestive, a suggestive trademark. And that is something like a descriptive trademark, except that it's not directly descriptive. It, it, it suggests a characteristic or what of, of the business or what the business does. It requires the person who hears or sees that trademark to make uh, some um, mental connection with between what they see or hear on the trademark and what your business does. It requires some effort or, t or mental leap, I've heard it called, between the customer, potential customer, and your business. Uh, the best example that I'm aware of, the one I like the best for a, dis for a suggestive trademark uh, is Netflix. Net, it's on the internet, you get it through the internet, and you watch movies. Movies are called flicks. And so Netflix is a suggest. it doesn't say, it's not a characteristic of the business exactly. It's suggestive of what the business does. And so it, it, when you have a suggestive trademark, uh, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's strong enough that you should be able to get it trademarked through the USPTO and there's some other uh, benefits as well to having a strong trademark we'll talk about in a minute. But a suggestive trademark is a good place to start thinking about having uh, your trademark be at least suggestive of what you do with your business. Um, um, and so that's, that's rare, rare. I think you probably you want to put aside having a generic trademark, obviously, or even a, a merely descriptive trademark, you want to start thinking along the lines of having at least a suggestive, suggestive trademark. Another benefit to a suggestive trademark, such as Netflix, is that it does give a customer or a potential customer some idea of what your business is all about. And so it probably makes your marketing efforts perhaps a little easier than, whether, than having to explain what why what your business does if the trademark has nothing to do with your business. And that's why we're going to get to the next level of distinctiveness, and that is arbitrary. So you have generic, you have descriptive, you have suggestive, and suggestive, and now you have arbitrary. Arbitrary is more distinctive than suggestive. Arbitrary essentially means that the trademark itself has nothing to do with what the business does. So an, a great example is Apple for the computer company. Apple has nothing to do with computers. It's, a, it's merely an arbitrary trademark. And so that's a strong trademark because it is arbitrary. Um, but it does require perhaps a little more marketing effort on your, on your part on the front end so people will associate the trademark with your business. And they'll understand that in this case, for the example I'm giving, Apple has to do with a computer company. So if you, if you decided to uh, pick a, an arbitrary trademark, great. It's very distinctive. It's easily trademarkable. Provides a lot of protection because it is distinctive, but you're going to have to work a little harder perhaps to uh, have people associate your arbitrary trademark with what your business does. And the fifth and the most distinctive type of trademark the most easily trademarkable, the one that provides the most protection because it is so distinctive, is what is called fanciful. A fanciful trademark is essentially a made-up name, a word that doesn't, didn't exist before the trademark owner created it and then associated it with its business. Those, and by the fact that it is made up, is a, a name uh, or a trademark that is purely made up, just created for the purpose of associating it with your business, it's the most distinctive, the most easily trademarkable, and the most protected. Uh, the best example I can give you in the modern day is Google. Google was a made up word, uh, and um, it's a fanciful, so it's a fanciful trademark. And so once Google was uh, trademarked and uh, everyone came to know Google, great. It is a strong, strong trademark um, because it is fanciful. So to recap, five levels of distinctiveness for trademarks. Generic, which is the worst, not even trademarkable. Second, descriptive, perhaps trademarkable if, it if the name acquires some secondary meaning in addition to just the descriptive characteristic of your business. Third, where you start getting into better trademarks, 
uh, suggestive, such as Netflix. Fourth, uh, arbitrary, such as Apple for the Apple Computer Company. And fifth, the best and strongest trademark, fanciful, like Google. Now, I talked about the ease and, or difficulty of getting a trademark registered based on the distinctiveness of the trademark. That's one issue. The other issue is if someone seeks to infringe upon your trademark, what kind of protection uh, will your trademark be afforded in the event you have to uh, go to court over someone infringing your trademark? And the stronger your trademark, the more distinctive it is, the stronger your protection is. And that's because there's uh, the courts basically uh, have determined that the more distinctive your, your trademark is, the more protective uh, protections it's going to be afforded because uh, there's, it's, the courts have basically said that it's more, more likely, uh, there's, there's less likelihood of c consumer uh, confusion between a very distinctive trademark and, and an infringer. And so, um, uh, or perhaps I said that wrong, there, there's, they want to protect against uh, consumer confusion and they, they, uh, the courts have basically determined that there's a greater likelihood of an infringer confusing the marketplace by trying to infringe upon a very distinctive trademark than one in which the trademark was not as distinctive. And so if you were to uh, have a fanciful trademark and an infringer uh, 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 tried to use a mark that was confusingly similar to your fanciful trademark, you would receive more protection because of the fact that your trademark is so distinctive and is fanciful than if your trademark had been merely descriptive and someone tried to infringe upon it. So there's there are great reasons uh, ease of trademarkability and protection in the event of an infringement to use the most distinctive trademark that you're comfortable doing. As I mentioned earlier, there may be some benefits to using something, uh, some trademark that is merely suggestive. It's, it's trademarkable and there's good protection because it's distinctive, but uh, you do have some connection between the trademark and the nature of your business, such as Netflix. When you get into arbitrary and fanciful trademarks, you're going to have to uh, work uh, with your marketing efforts to have the, the marketplace understand that that trademark is associated with your business. So that's a, that's a very uh, bare bones uh, explanation of the five levels of, a di of distinctiveness for a trademark. And hopefully this will help you in determining what type of trademark, if you're starting a new business or starting a new uh, professional practice and you want to associate your your flagship trademark with your business, this may help you come up with a, a name or a design or some trademark that is very distinctive that you can get trademarked through the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office and also will provide you with a lot of good protection against possible future infringement of your trademark by others in the marketplace. So. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please feel free to get, reach out and I'll be glad to talk to you about it. Thanks again.